Hi guys and welcome to another video, but before we do get into it, I need to address the obvious, the get up I'm in right now. I've literally just finished my morning workout, so then I thought I'd make a video straight after. So I'm fully wet, I look like an absolute douchebag, alright? I get it. But today we are going to be doing an Instagram Q&A. So what I've done, of course, as usual, I've put out on Instagram, asked you guys to send in all the questions. There was literally like 30 to 50 questions that were sent in, but I'm selecting 10 from random. I'm going to answer them today, so if you do want to get involved, in the future, be sure to follow me on Instagram because then you'll be in with a chance to get involved in the future. Oh my God, I'm still out of breath from my workout. Whew, I can barely breathe. I'm so unfit, it's unreal. So question number one, it's a bit of a deep one really. It's from M underscore Luca0191. He asks, do you have any regrets about YouTube? Hashtag Sony Army, love the hashtag, but do I have any regrets? Not necessarily, I don't have any regrets doing YouTube. I'm uh, quite happy with everything I have done on YouTube. Um, I think maybe my way in which I've approached YouTube uh, at times, um, I probably regret a little bit. I kind of tried to tailor the channel to what everyone else wanted and didn't really consider what I wanted for quite some time um, in terms of what content I was going to put out. Um, like for example, now only over like sort of the last few months have I started putting a bit more gaming on the channel. I know you might think it's because obviously with everything's going on right now, I don't really have any option to talk about football. But, you know, I, I do love my gaming. I game every single day when I'm not at work anyway. So uh, I've always wanted to add a bit more gaming into it. And now I'm just doing things that I enjoy rather than thinking this will get me views or this will add subscribers to my tally. I'm just doing what I enjoy. And I hope that it comes across in the videos because I actually enjoy what I'm putting out. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I haven't enjoyed what I've done in the past. It's just not been always 100% something I like really really wanted to do if you know what I mean it was something that I felt like it had to be done almost like it was work with certain videos when in reality this YouTube channel shouldn't be like that it should be about things that I enjoy and then hopefully it comes across so then you enjoy it if that makes sense so yeah I don't necessarily have any regrets just uh, wish that I had this sort of changing attitude sooner I suppose uh, just doing things that I enjoy and just doing it because I enjoy doing certain things I don't know whether I'm making any sense here Jason underscore Wayne 88 asks your thoughts on Simon Grayson with a, a laughing emoji there. Now, of course, as a manager, I think he was terrible. Um, but I need to, you know, give him props. He's gave me the tools to make probably the most popular impression in skits I've done on this channel because I basically just grabbed Grayson's accent slightly and just turned this Simon Grayson, Grayson sorry, Simon Grayson impression into an absolute lunatic of a man and just did anything with it. I've made Simon Grayson look like an absolute nutcase with my impressions of Simon Grayson. Um, just, I'll, I'll leave a link to it actually. Um, I'll put it in one of the cards above if you want to see uh, one of my Simon Grace, uh, Grayson impressions. Um, but yeah, it, it's been really well received on the channel and people seem to really find it funny. But yeah, so in terms of the manager, he, he was terrible for Sunderland. Um, he didn't go on to do much better after leaving us. And uh, but he's gave me a very very uh, good bit of joy, I guess, from doing impressions of him. Even though it really isn't him at all, <laughs> I just use his name and then make a character up who is a nut job. Henry underscore Holland ten asks, "Have you played any sports other than football before?" Um, yeah, well, I, I used to be particularly well. I used to be, yeah, I, I used to be quite a sporty person. I used to just differ from sport to sport like in high school I played a little bit of basketball not much but only a tiny bit like in the courts at break and stuff like that I dabbled in cricket for a short while as well I strangely actually used to really really enjoy badminton I hated tennis well I didn't hate tennis but I just didn't enjoy it as much but I actually quite enjoyed badminton but yeah I've dabbled in all kind of sports and whenever we did PE I used to get involved in everything because I, I just love sports in general be it rounders or hockey do you know what I mean um, I, I quite enjoy every sport but football of course being been the main one, so I do, I do like to consider myself quite a sporty person, although over the last few years I haven't really took part in any sports and just ate food. A lot of food. And drank, of course. Alcohol. A lot of alcohol. SAFC underscore fans underscore 1879 asks, what is your guilty pleasure? Now, of course, you'll probably already know this. It's pretty well known now if you've followed the channel for a while. I don't really class it as a guilty pleasure, but a lot of people would. And that is that I'm an absolutely massive Pokemon nerd. I'm a huge Pokemon geek. I love Pokemon. I've played it since Gen 1. The games, um, you know, I love everything about Pokemon. I love collecting, um, obviously, Pokemon. I don't really do the cards anymore. I, I left that in my past when I was a kid. But I've played every single game 
uh, from the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, DS, now on the Switch. I've got every single game, played through every single game, and I've actually got now, I've collected every single Pokemon. I've completed the entire Pokedex, and I have them all at my disposal, and 99% of them are literally at level 100. So if that means I'm a Pokemon geek, then so be it. And if it means it's my guilty conscience, guilty conscience, guilty pleasure, then so be it. Luke Warren 2 asks, have you been watching the Bundesliga? And if so, do you have a preferred team? Now, um, the day the Bundesliga come back, I was actually at work, but I did slightly manage to watch a little bit on my phone. And uh, I think I follow probably, what, 99% of uh, English fans follow and that is uh, uh, Dortmund. I absolutely love Dortmund. I just love what they're about. They don't go around splashing the cash season after season after season. Of course they have a bit of money at the disposal, of course they do, but a lot of it has been brought through youth. They find, and that, what a scouting network they have by the way, to find some of the players they've unearthed. Um, and I love that concept. It's something that I, I really like. I love to see young players come through uh, and go on to succeed and they just have you know, an amazing record in doing that, bringing some class players through the system with Royce, Hummels, of course they've got Sancho now, um, and of course now they've got probably one of the most exciting strikers on the planet in Haaland, uh, and for him, and I was saying it on uh, social media the other day, Haaland, for me, I have never been so excited about seeing a striker, more impressed by a young striker since Wayne Rooney, and I can remember when I was young and when I first saw Wayne Rooney, I wanted to watch every single game he played because I was that excited by him, do you know what I mean? Now, every time Haaland plays, I need, I want to go watch him, do you know what I mean? Because I just think he's incredible. His, um, you know, his, his positional awareness, his, uh, his movement off the ball, his pace, his strength, his finishing is second to none. And I think he will quickly become one of the best strikers in the world, if not very, very soon. Um, but yeah, so the answer to that in short is Dortmund. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this one. It's uh, sort of Pokey FA 2006. I do apologise if I've pronounced that wrong. But he asks, what has life in lockdown been like? Now, for me, it actually hasn't changed that much because I'm a key worker and I work a lot. And, you know, I wasn't... The only thing that I probably miss out the most is obviously going to watch the football and going to the pub with my mates every now and then. Do you know what I mean? I don't have the option to just say to one of my housemates, you know, because we have a pub at the end of the road. I can't just say, like, fancy going for a game of pool or a couple of pints or something like that, which is what I did used to do to just kind of chill out on that. So that option isn't there anymore. Um, and obviously the football isn't on. Those are the biggest things that I miss. Mainly the football, of course. The pub isn't really an absolute necessity, but it's a nice, you know, it's a nice option to have. But um, other than that, I've still been working exactly the same um, with me being a, a support worker for adults with learning disabilities. I, I'm pretty much doing the exact same as I was anyway. You know, it's not like I was, uh, you know, I'm not, I haven't been furloughed. I'm not sat at home and bored like I see a lot of people are. I'm still working my ass off, do you know what I mean? And I'm coming home and making videos when I can. So only a small percentage of things have changed. It's the football that I miss the most, to be honest with you. So yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with it okay. I'm, um, uh, I, I try and work out as much as I can. To be fair, when the lockdown was first in place, I was working out in the back garden every morning, like as much as I possibly could, uh, much as I could. But uh, you know, I think you lose motivation a bit, particularly when you just go into work all the time and there isn't that much going on. You just start to eat crap. And uh, my diet has been pretty poor over the last sort of two or three weeks, but I'm trying to get back to eating healthy and uh, working out again. As you can see, hence by the douchey attire I've got on. <laughs> Thomas SAFC fan asks, what's your favourite Tyne Way Derby match? Now, it has to be for me, just because I think it was just an utter demolition and one of the best performances I'd seen in a, in a Tyne Way Derby was the 3-0 win at St. James's and that goal from uh, David Vaughan as well was just an absolute world and it probably didn't spoke about enough. I know I recently did my top five goals um, of Sunderland of all time and that really should have been in there, but there were just other ones that had more meaning to it, I guess, because we were already 2-0 at the time against uh, against the Mags. So, you know, but that goal for me was just insane. He had it on a on the left-hand side, and he's hit it with his left foot, going from right to left. Keeper had no chance to make it 3-0. And it was just an insane day. It was an absolutely insane day, and I absolutely loved it. I, I didn't actually go myself, unfortunately. I couldn't get tickets, but I did watch it on TV um, in a pub. Of course, it was in a pub. But, uh, but um, yeah, it was absolutely insane. And that's my favourite time where Derby match. Bobby's underscore Sunderland underscore account asks, got any plans in the future for YouTube or Sunderland? I do have a couple of uh, plans for the YouTube or thoughts, should I say. But I always get thoughts and half of them don't end up coming to fruition. Of course, for a while I wanted to bring more gaming uh, to the channel, but I wanted other people to enjoy it as well as myself. And, for example, with the Outlast series now, people are really enjoying it. 
Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I love that other people enjoy it because it's a game that I'm really enjoying as well. So I would like to bring more gaming to the channel. I know a lot of people like to hear me talk about Sunderland, which will, of course, come back once Sunderland are back and whether, when there are proper things to talk about. But I have said, you know, since lockdown has come in, there's been a lot of negativity for obvious reasons. And I want to try and keep the ch that channel as positive as possible because a lot of people are using this channel just to, to chill out to whilst they're dealing with the stresses of lockdown. And I don't really feel comfortable just ranting and raving about negative crap whilst all this stuff's going on. Do you know what I mean? Because it seems pretty futile whilst more serious stuff is going on. But of course, when everything's back to normal, Sunderland are back underway, I'll be back complaining better than ever, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I, I do want to add more gaming to, uh, to the to the channel um you know if you have any more games you want me to play after outlast then do let me know i'm always open uh, to, to try anything really and if it's a game you enjoy i'll keep playing it i'll do a full series of it if it's just a game i dabble in a little bit maybe do one or two episodes and then don't play with it again you know then, then that's fine but i would like to just be a bit more casual with the channel like that that's what i'm trying to aim for now you know rather than just like, sort of plowing out videos for the sake of it do you know what i mean i want to be enjoying what i'm doing uh, but yeah, in terms of you know ideas and what I'm, I want for the future, just take it day by day, see what happens. Underscore Chloe underscore photography underscore one asks one player you would bring back and would love to meet. Now, if you mean sort of just an old player who maybe is retired, but we bring them back in the prime, then I think the player we would need now is probably Julio Walker. Julio Walker because I believe you know it, I could probably go for Kevin Phillips because of course we need a goal scorer. That's what we're screaming out for. But we also need creativity in and around the box. And um, Hilly Walker can do that. He could play left on the right and towards the later end of his career, he did play down the centre. But I just think Julio Walker, who has that creativity, has that spark, that bit of magic, we could put any, him anywhere in the final third and he would make chances, which is something I, I do believe we've lacked throughout the last season or two. We've, of course, we go through games where we do bad goals, but you expect that in this league and it's very topsy turvy. But he can definitely, you know, in those many games where there's not much in it, or we're struggling to create anything, Julio Walker can do that. He can just create a chance like that. We can bag a goal himself. and We just need a little magician like that, and uh, I believe Julio Walker could do that. And in terms of meeting him, I believe I actually have got a picture with him um, from years ago. I was probably about 10 or 11 at the time, or 12, I don't know, whatever. I was very young, and <laughs> so, uh, but I don't have the picture anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, I have met him very briefly before. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have a pint with him as well, I guess. <laughs> now, for the final question, it is from Connor.Sarge. He asks... Moyes or Grayson? Now, for that one, I probably have to go for Grayson only because I managed to get a bit of happiness out of doing impressions out of him. Whereas Moyes, he is probably just the most miserable man who I don't know how the hell he's ever had any form of success because he's tactically terrible. He, you know, I don't know how he could motivate anyone because he's just so naturally miserable um, and just a terrible, terrible manager. Terrible manager, and of course he's the one who brought us down from uh, from the Premier League. And you know the players he signed, he was trying to sign all the old boys from Everton from a decade before, which obviously proved to be a terrible decision. I don't know why he did it. You know we replaced Sam Allardyce with a man who was just an utter joke. So for me, it's Grayson. <laughs> which you know it's deciding which shit is better, and I just think that Grayson's shit is a little bit better than Moyes. That sounds so weird. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> well, that is the Q&A done, guys. That is 10 questions. I think it's 10 questions anyway, if I have counted that right. But, of course, if you do want to get involved in the future with these Instagram Q&As, make sure you do follow me on Instagram. But if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sarni Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.